Welcome back to the channel guys. We're at the Fairmont Del Mar here in San Diego with the lads from me and my golf, Piers and Andy. Thank you so much Thanks for coming for having along. Us. Good to see you, mate. Today we're gonna to be talking about the three biggest myths. Huge. Please do not do these. <laughs> <laughs> that we see players struggle with. A Couple of misconceptions here that we're gonna clean up. We're gonna have some great back and forth, a little bit of a live lesson on each other. We get to see Piers dance moves as exactly, well. Yeah. <laughs> Tip number three, that is the one that everyone's gonna stick around for yeah. because that is gonna make a huge difference to your golf game. Yeah. Stay tuned guys, this is awesome stuff. Okay lads, three biggest myths in golf instruction. There's so many players out there, they're talking to their buddies back and forth. You need to do this, you need to do that. But we see a lot of the time that as coaches tends to make them worse rather than better. Unfortunately. So, yeah, I think it's crucial as well. We were talking about this over dinner on Monday. It's so important that you have the right concepts and image and beliefs about what the golf swing should do. Because if you've got the right concept, the motion can be much easier. If you've got the wrong concept, you're going to see some funky things going on. Yeah. And we, uh, we handpicked three rippers for you guys at home three to rippers. go through so we can discuss together and we can get our individual views and perspectives on the way that we believe they are and why they are a misconception for the average golfer and some great drills they can implement straight away with some actionable advice where they can improve these just to help yeah. deepen not only their understanding, but then their performance and their ability to execute. Just, just my note on this as well. If we think about, you know, concepts and we think about the film Inception, you yeah. know, you can literally say one thing to somebody and 10 years later, if that's the only one thing they've actually thought about as their concept, it's amazing what that can actually do to their golf swing. And it's fine if it's a good concept, yeah. but make sure you've got a good concept. Myth number one. Number one. Okay, weight, weight shift. Weight, weight shift. shift. Let's, let's explain weight shift because this is something that we see golfers come to us for lessons or trying to do and they're getting it wrong mm. because of what they think should happen. Let's clear up what should happen. But first of all, let's see some of the issues that we see from golfers, Pierce. What happens and what it leads to in the swing? What does it yeah, cause? for sure. Okay, so look, I mean, with any club, this is when we're hitting a full shot. So if we think about weight shift and a golfer coming to us, thinking about trying to shift weight, we'll often see this move here, mm. where there's an excessive move off the golf ball. Now, if we think about it, it can work, but there's gonna be a, a more excessive move back toward the target to stand any chance of collecting that ball first when you're on the fairway or just hitting a consistent shot with a driver. So we'll just generally see, I won't hit one, Andy, you're safe. We'll generally see golfers I think I'm move. safe anyway, to be honest. Yeah, be, if you stand right there on the target line, you'd be absolutely safe. <laughs> But if you, if you think about a golfer moving off the golf ball like this, it's so much harder now to get back to the golf ball. And we say for the average golfer, the amateur golfer, it really is about the backswing. Yeah. Give yourself a chance in the backswing and then you, you're gonna be okay. Exactly what you're saying. And uh, back to the most important fundamental of golf, which is your ability to strike that ball in a consistent fashion. Mm -hmm. And that is all about low point. Absolutely. It really is. And what we're talking about here, weight shift, if we, if we see somebody shifting off the golf ball with an iron, it's so hard. With a driver, you can get away with it because the ball's teed up nice and high. It creates more room and time to square the face, so it's not the end of the world. But if you're somebody who's trying to shift weight with the irons and doing this, then you have got a recipe of actually hitting a lot of fat shots. Yeah, for sure. So let's let's talk through, Pierce. What? How do we shift weights? Like, let's describe. That's a concept. Yeah, let's maybe, just yeah. show exactly what we need to happen just yeah. to show this good backswing pivot motion. And, and you know what? We spoke about this so often over the years, and there's so many different ways of thinking about this, and we just lots of talk about. You know, center of mass and weight shift and pressure. Whereas we like to use a, a word we feel that works really well for a lot of golfers when we've got them on the practice tee or they're watching a video online. And it's about loading the backswing. So if that's your concept, okay, I'm gonna load the backswing. Now load doesn't mean that. Mm. Load means that both feet are on the ground, obviously, but you can see now as I'm doing this, I've got a really nice rotation from the hips. Yeah, and absolutely. And we can see that as you do so, there's a significant sort of visual of some pressure being applied on the instep and you could quite easily kind of lift your toes up yep, there. But we see a lot of players, if they're not loading, well, then they can't. They're on their toes. They're on their toes so much. Yeah, so again, even if you just took the golf club out of the equation uh, totally and just said, right, I'm just going to make a move where I actually get this load into this right leg. You can see as a result of this, I'm loading the leg, so I'm getting weight or pressure into this leg, but I'm getting a good rotation of the body as well, which is obviously crucial. I'll do that again for us then. You'll notice as Pierce does this, look at the, diff the rotation of the torso. Mm. We've got the lead knee moving in slightly. We've got the right leg straightening a little bit. Everything that's moving over to the right is shifting that weight and that pressure into that trail leg, but we're doing it in a way without any sway of that body. The head's staying relatively steady. We're not really swaying off the golf ball we've got this very much a centered pivot motion which is just crucial really yeah for sure and i think look when we when we talk about let's look at good players or how they move as well 
it's important to understand that you know one line that we use a lot is the backswing line so a line from the ankle all the way yeah. up to the hip so it's okay to move through that line to start with as long as by the time you get to the top of the backswing you are recentering okay. so we'll always say an early sway is fine as long as you recenter. What we don't want is stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, and then get the late sway. That's again a whole other problem we don't want. So yes, allowing some great to players doing this as well. Rory McIlroy, yeah. Henrik Stenson really come to mind when it comes to this. They they have this little move away, but then they recenter at the top. And do you believe that's uh, partly due to the misconception of load up the back foot completely to the top of the back swing, almost like the golf swing is two separate motions. Yeah, 100%. And then start down, whereas we yeah. see it's a dynamic flow, just the same as when you throw a ball, the hand's still going back as you're stepping forward. Yeah, and you look, you look at the best players there, there's parts of their golf swing which is move in the downswing as they're finishing the back swing. So you're right, to, to detach the two and go, it's a back swing, it's a transition, a downswing and a through swing, I think is a big mistake, yeah. as you say keep it flowing, keep it movement, that's so important. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Let's go through a couple of drills then. I think they'll really, they'll really help the viewers on this. In order to really, first of all, keep a nice flow yeah. and emotion yeah, yeah, that yeah. you were sort of describing there mm -hmm. and to avoid any of this sway and shift, like, you know, excessive shift, but yeah. we don't want that either. Yeah, we, we, we were very fortunate uh, not that long ago to film with Padre Carrington and he was talking about creating distance, but he was saying, you can tell a golfer who's struggling because this is what they look like at setup. Oh yeah. It's stationary. It's, you know, they're not moving. It's as though they're thinking about what to do. The only golfer I've ever seen who's any good doing that is Lee Westwood. Mm. He's the only <laughs> one I've seen doing that. And it's hard to, to, to go against how good he is. <laughs> yeah. But he would, you know, from there, so he will stand pretty still. But the majority of golfers will see, they freeze over the golf ball, even to the point that when they take the club back, it snags in the ground or they just move yeah. off the ball a lot. So keep it moving, a good golfer, we did a chipping video with you just, and you're moving your feet and your toes all the time. Mm. That's what we want to see. You know, waggle the club, look at the target, bounce from foot to foot, foot to foot. This is allowing you to keep moving. So when you're ready to go, then you can actually hit it. And I'm Again, actually going to hit one, yeah? yeah I'm me... actually going to incorporate a little bit of a drill that I'm doing as well at the moment. So, you know, you can hover the club when you do I'm this. Stand behind, <laughs> standing behind you, Karen. It's getting around even more. But you can hover the club when you're doing this. I have a little drill where I'm actually practicing my move away and then I'll pull the trigger. Yeah. But hover the club, let it sort of move around, bounce around, and then from there, pull the trigger. And I think so many players would be hesitant to do that because they're moving. They would think, oh, don't I need to stay fixated and <laughs> looking at the ball? And as you do so, you'll see that you're, you've got an awareness of where you want the club to strike the yes. ground, but you're making an athletic move and the golf club naturally came back and struck the golf ball and we can see ball first, ground second contact. If you're thinking about keeping still, make sure you watch tip two because we need to blow that oh, theory yeah. out of the water as well. Good golfers move more and we are going to cover that in, in tip two, so we won't go too much into that. <laughs> you wanted to go into it straight away, didn't you? <laughs> okay, so should we go through another drill as well? Yep. Yeah, okay, so look, another thing you can do, and again, we've spoken to some really good golfers, but some real powerful, this is Joe Miller is somebody, one of the former world long drive champion and talks about this. In that, how's about if you wanted to start your golf swing by actually just pushing into the left leg a little bit? So yeah. you push into that left leg, and then from there, it kind of moves you then into your backswing. So you push into it, then you might get that initial move through the backswing line, but then you recenter. And again, the whole process then is a fluid motion. It's not, okay, position, position. We don't really, I mean, when we hear golfers talk about P1, P2, P3, and things like mm -hmm. that, we don't like that. You know, let's keep it flowing. Have this idea in your head that it's a fluid motion and you're going to be better for it. I think combining both those drills, if we just give you two clubs and players can do this at home, even get two or three and grip them together as one. Yep. And as soon as you put a heavy object in your hands, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. so easy to get that feeling like you're pulling it away. So you kind of have to be in motion. It's a great gym exercise that you guys can do at home. Uh, get one of those like really heavy golf clubs or even the donuts on and you'll find that as you're in constant motion, you almost need to feel that you're shifting that pressure to allow that freedom of rotation to really yeah. kind of kick in. Yeah, so it's like getting a medicine ball and kind of throw it up in the air almost. It starts here, doesn't it? It starts from this sort of, from the ground up, we're getting this pushing motion here, you know, everything's starting really from there as opposed to from Thank here you. and then trying to move the club away with the hands and arms. You just see it, I mean, if you, you look, if you're watching this at the driver range right now, press pause and watch the other golfers and you'll see people doing it. There's a guy here, I'm just watching him, see where he does this. He's staying really still. Keep moving, keep moving, and then I'm just gonna push into that leg. 
Nice. Nothing wrong with that at all. Better, well, you, better you than us hitting that, that shot. Nice. <laughs> but it's, it, when you do that as well, what I like about this is just it relieves a bit of tension. Yeah. You know, you're not there, you're not tense, you're not sort of, you know, tightening up before you hit the shot. It, it enables you to stay free and fluid and, as you said, flowing motion. I, I, I think we talk about athletic a, a lot, ta- being in an athletic posture and things like that. This will 100% give you that feeling of athleticism for sure. But I think, look, make sure you understand what you're looking to do in your backswing. It's a huge concept. All right. Busted myth number one that segues perfectly into number two, which is more revolving around this part and looking down at the golf ball, right? Let's get Andy into this one. Yeah. Okay, so we're seeing your dance moves just there, <laughs> you, you don't want to see any more of that. <laughs> <laughs> you do, they're pretty good. <laughs> and we see the, uh, I've seen a video about that. Uh. So we see that keeping the feet moving, keeping active, that helps that kind of pressure shift and that freedom of rotation, but also the perception and the misconception that we see in myth number two here is all about keeping your eye on the ball. And yes, the ball is played from a static position. And even though that might seem intuitively easier for a lot of players, can also be one of the biggest hindrances because they ended up swinging at a ball and trying to hit a ball and hope it goes towards the target rather than having the intention of swinging towards a target and the ball getting in the way. So let's talk about keeping your head down. <laughs> I think this is the number one though, isn't it? I think this is probably the most common one that we see. I had a lesson sure. yesterday, a lady came for a lesson yesterday. I said, what are you thinking? I'm trying to get an insight into her mind of her concept. She went, well, obviously I need to keep my eye on the ball. That's, that's what I've been told. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, that just shows me now an element of you know, limitation within that. But it is, it is the most important thing, and you can't underestimate the importance of this because I think what we see is when a golfer hits a bad shot as well, they may be hit poor contact and they think that they moved too much. Mm. Okay, so it's like, okay, well, I need to keep my eye on the ball. I need to stay a little bit more still because, because it's static. Well, the, the, the more still I am, the easier it's going to be to actually get back to that same position. Mm. When, as Kerrod mentioned, it's actually the ball's going to get in the way of the motion as a move back into the right side that then shifts through the golf ball and the ball gets in the way as opposed to there's the golf ball let's see if we can hit that golf ball without any dynamism yeah. really so um i mean let's go through really what it does in terms of the backswing first of all and i think it's really important that we're talking about when we think about keeping the eye on the ball or our eyes on the golf ball it really just locks us up so if i take my posture here if i'm thinking about keeping my eye on the ball it's keeping my eyes fixed. Mm. So when I do this now, if I try and do that and be really focused and keep my eye on the golf ball, it really now limits my ability to move because I'm so focused on keeping my eye on the golf ball. There's no real head rotation. There's no real hips or torso rotation. And from here now, I feel really tight. Yeah. Have a go, Hannibal. Well. We're, we're doing that and we definitely need to stand over. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really going to be, again, focus is just eye on the golf ball here. I'm not going to take my eye off the golf. I can read the word practice on the top. Look familiar? That's, that's and and that, was a, that was a bad <laughs> shot. That was a bad shot. And, you know, this is what we see all the time, though. And as soon as somebody hits a bad shot, they then think, oh, I took my off the golf ball. I didn't keep it down for long enough. And then they just completely restrict yeah. the whole motion and actually make it worse. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think one thing to consider if you're playing any other sport, you're kicking a football, you're hitting a tennis ball, you're aware of the ball. But it is not your sole focus. You don't kick a soccer ball and go or play tennis and perfectly wait for the moment of impact so long that you then break the form and structure and forget about your intention of where the ball wants to go. I think it's a brilliant topic of discussion because when I'm here and people ask us so often, where should I be looking? When I'm here, I'm not looking at anything. Mm-hmm. There's, no, there's nothing that I'm actually looking at. I'm in my peripheral vision here. I'm aware of the golf ball. I'm aware of my surroundings, but I'm not actually focused on anything. If you're in that focused vision, that's going to really limit you and restrict you. And I think it's a really good topic because so many golfers are going, right, I'm going to focus on just the back of the golf ball there or yeah. a specific spot. As soon as they do that, it channels their focus and limits any motion. And, and I think, look, we have to understand, you know, a golf swing which takes under two seconds and a picture has been taken of Jack Nicholas, Sam Sneed back in the day at Impact. And they go, right, let's see what we can learn from that picture. OK, their eyes are looking at the ball. Yeah. Okay, that is a split second moment in time that 
they have freedom around that. And we can talk about different head positions at impact, but ultimately they don't fixate on keeping it still and keeping their eyes on the ball. It's all coming from just one image. That is. And we are not saying at impact that you shouldn't be here. No, nope. this is Absolutely. a, this is a good, this is a good place. What we're talking about here is how the thought impacts the overall motion. Yeah. Really important. Yeah, yeah. And you'll see, and you'll see what's going to happen now. Cause let's go into the backswing about how you can perhaps combat this or what you should be looking for. Okay. With the, so if I make a backswing now, I just want you to notice a few things from the face on camera. So I'm gonna to swing to the top of my swing and make a good rotation. So you'll see, first of all, my back is towards the target, but notice my hips, my legs, but notice the peak of the cap. The peak of the cap has actually rotated back considerably here. It hasn't stayed sort of straight on. And look at the difference here. As soon as I allow that peak of the cap to move, I'm now opening up my, up my hips. I'm now opening up my torso. And this is great for power, but it's also really important to deliver the club pretty close to plane. If we restrict the body here, it's very easy to swing over and across and get steep as well. And everyone's got, they're built differently, right? You have a very long neck. Some of the viewers out there may not be uh, in the same position. Obviously what happens is you have the ability to move your head in such a way relative to where your torso is. And for a lot of players, my dad would be setting up like this. Yeah. And if he didn't move his head at all, he wouldn't even be able to make a golf swing. Right? So uh, exactly. it's very important even for yourself uh, to ensure that you are allowing some of this freedom of rotation of the head and the neck and allowing that tip of the cap to slightly move to free up the rest of the rotation. And as we said, the best golfers move more than the worst golfers. They've yeah. got a lot yeah. of range of motion. They're allowing the legs to move. They're allowing the torso to move, the cap to move, but they're moving in such a good way that as we've talked about in the sort of first one, much more of a centered pivot motion. Let's go backswing then hit one so we can just focus. Sorry, let's hit one so we can focus on the backswing. And all I'm just going to do on this, I'm just, I can even see in the shadow on the ground here, I'm allowing the peak of the cap to rotate as I'm swinging back here. So I'm just going to be aware of that. See how it allows everything to move with me. Again, the motion is free. You know, and the great thing is when you do this, if you are somebody who's been focusing on this, as soon as you unlock the thought, you'll go, it actually feels better. Yeah. It feels easier. I feel like I've got more freedom and range of motion now just because the thought's changed. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so look, I mean, we mentioned obviously through the ball and mentioned, you know, what that could look like and a thought on that. What are we looking at there? So same thing applies really. Think about what we want in the through swing. As Kerrod mentioned, we really want a good through swing past the golf ball. And if, if we can get that, it's going to allow us to create a bit of a weight shift, which we know is important. We want to be able to rotate the body on the way through as well. We want to get ball followed by turf. Mm. If we're thinking about keeping the eyes down or the eye on the golf ball, it keeps us really from shifting weight, rotating the, the body, limits power. It gets the arms working and wrists working independently. All sorts of bad things happens to the golf swing from this, which we don't want. So, I mean, if you're doing this, you are really limiting your potential as a golfer. So if we can free things up from the head and the, the eyes here, it really enables us to create the motion that we need to play our most consistent, but also, you know, powerful game. It's, it's definitely someone, if, if, if we see a golfer who is doing a lot of this through the golf ball, actually freeing up the head and rotating the head, actually can create a little bit more shaft lean. Massive, and it's, yeah. we actually, um, for, for example, if we look at, we think about some of these impacts, you think about Tommy Fleetwood, his impact, mm. he has his head back and to the side like so. He's actually working with Butch Harmon now to actually get more rotation of his head. And the way he worded it was that it allows the club, sorry, the body to carry the club better through the golf yeah. ball. Because the more that head goes back, as Andy was showing there, the more flip with the hands. So Correct. he's allowing the head to move so the body can actually carry the weight of the club better. An interesting point there, yeah, the least rotated players through the ball will have the most club face rotation. Yes. And the most rotated will have yeah. the least. And and again, ultimately, there might be a point to this, especially when we get into into... Uh, misconception number three that we might want to look at some things like this but I think just if you look at a magazine and again I'll go back to you see images of golfers Tiger Woods and Tommy Fleetwood and Colin Morikawa who are looking like this it can give you a misconception of what you're looking for. We are going to be harping on about this for the next 20 years so. and there's going to be comments <laughs> on this post going no you're wrong you need to keep your eye on the ball because I've seen all the best players do it yeah. Trust us, we've been coaching that for a long time. If you're doing this, it is probably limiting your game. So, yeah. so you just what's, what's your thoughts on the way so through for someone who's... Here's a great exercise on the way through that I want you to do. So when you're swinging and hitting some shots here now, instead of doing this, and then having a look up trying to catch the golf ball, I want you to really hit a shot and see if you can catch the flight of the golf ball 
as early as possible in the swing. Almost want to catch it as it's leaving the club face. The quicker you can get it, the better the body motion is going to be. It's going to allow you to rotate, shift weight, all of the things that we've mentioned earlier. Mm. So when I hit the shot now, I'm just really going to see, can I catch that flight of the golf ball as early as I can? And it just creates so much more freedom within the swing. I guarantee it'll feel better for you as well. So let's hit a shot here and just watch the head on this. But you'll notice from the motion here, I've just allowed that to work and I saw the whole of that flight on that one. You'd rather be a bit thin than a bit fat though, wouldn't you? I Andy, definitely don't want those shots? diggy ones, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, so that wraps up myth number two and is going to lead perfectly into the final one. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. So we've gone from moving the feet, freedom of rotation through an effective load in the backswing. Then we've talked about ensuring that we are rotating through not keeping our eye on the ball. What? Some people are going to comment, well, well that, that can't happen, it can't happen. <laughs> and finally, this one is probably one of the most recent clickbaity yeah. terms that we hear out there. And I think a lot of it is based around a misconception of time and place of when this should happen. Mm -hmm. And also players looking at 2D images of their favorite golfer at the moment of impact. But it is about getting open at impact. Getting open. Yeah. Do you know what? I think there's one thing that you say, Pierce had this quote about getting open. You remember what it was? Go on. You can't get open if you're open. Can't get open if you're open. Um, and I think it's just a great discussion point because as you mentioned, you'll see a lot of the best, <laughs> <laughs> you'll see a lot of the best players at impact and you'll see these two butt cheeks. Yeah. And oh, well, I need to be open. And this is surely the thing that's going to stop my issues that I'm having in the golf swing. Well, I think it's a great discussion point about really when and if you should be trying to do this yeah, and some yeah, of the things yeah. that you need to bear in mind in order and also what it influences in terms of the ball flight, because this yeah. is where so many people get it off. And look, there's a, there's a big thread to this, really. We can talk about this quite a bit, but another thing we'll add to this as well, the most common fault that we see golfers do is a slice. Mm. They will look at the best players to figure out what to do, as we've just said, images or slow-mos and hips open. Okay, so if Tiger Woods has got his hips open at impact, he doesn't slice it. And they kind of make this attachment and, and for whatever reason, okay, I've now got to get my hips open more yeah. to, to stop slicing it. Now, here's the problem with that. That's actually going to make it a lot worse. So let's just go through what we see. So again, as Andy was demonstrating there, two butt cheeks visible mm. from this down the line camera. This is me opening out. So this Karen is me getting... check out your butt cheeks. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I'm going to have a look at those. I'm over. Yeah. <laughs> so that's obviously a lot of rotation but we are seeing that and we're seeing it more and more now with the modern day golf athletes, they're getting loads of rotation. Mm. But the problem we'll find is, if we think of this, if I just get to the top of the backswing, if I were to not disassociate my arms from my body, this is what's gonna happen. If I rotate my hips, where's the club going? Straight over. Straight over, now you probably know, I call this a decapitation move because if, if, if this was a sword from that move there, I'm chopping my head off. Mm. So from there, if I continue to turn my hips, I'm going to throw the club massively over the plane. The club's going to be swinging massively to the left, and it's going to be a real big problem with a the big, size. A big part of this, just echoing what you said there, is actually giving yourself the potential to even get the golf club coming down into the slot so that they can open. A lot of that is about creating depth in the backswing, yes. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So swing to the top for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the top of the backswing. If I was to just let this golf club here uh, dangle from the end of the grip, you'll see this kind of works down through Pierre's ankle. Now we see a lot of players through the first two myths that we've been talking about, be it they're not oh, rotating yep, yep, or shifting sorry, yep. their pressure, they won't be deep enough with this golf club. So yeah. even if they tried to swing from the yeah, inside cool. or something similar, as soon as they start to unwind, they start decapitating themselves once again. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, from here, there really is no way, no way around that. And again, we Andy mentioned a quote there, you know, you can't get open if you're open. So as soon as the club face gets open now, again, very difficult for you to rotate again because you're just gonna leave that face wide open. You're gonna start shanking and slicing a lot of shots. Mm. So we'll always say that the only way you can get open is you've got to prime yourself. You've yeah. got to be ready to do it. And exactly what you just said there, if you follow what we spoke about in the first video, uh, the first few tips and, and Kerrod mentioning about depth to the backswing. So if we get a good load into the leg, 
so we get a good pivot in the backswing, we get the arms deep enough around the body. From there now, it's going to be easier, but it's still no guarantee, Correct. because if you just fire those hips again, you may want to do that. So if you're gonna work at firing the hips at all, then you would want to make sure that from here, as your hips rotated, the club didn't go with it. So your arms would almost delay and the club would almost go in the opposite direction. It feels the opposite direction. So that would be the move that you'd want to stand any chance of getting the club in a good delivery and whilst getting the hips open anyway. So you mentioned, Pierce, that look, one of the biggest things that we see, the, the biggest problem in golf is this slice. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that we always do, we always often film um, a golfer's practice swing in slow-mo and just see what's going on. And it's surprising how many golfers in their practice swing, that club face is nowhere near looking down the target line. It's way right. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's so easy for golfers to make a really nice practice swing, get it perfectly on plane, because that face can be 50 degrees open. It doesn't really make any difference. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we need to coordinate the start line, we have to then make the, the adjustments and all these compensations in order to do that. I wonder how many people have paused the video now and are videoing their practice, yeah, their practice exactly. swing in slow motion. Well, if you haven't already, yes, you need to do it. So if we can control the club face through the golf ball and create a better arm motion through the ball, it really enables us to move the, the hips and the lower body in a better manner to sync those two up. So Pierce, just, just show us through a little bit about what we want through impact and then we'll give a drill for the guys, which is okay. really powerful. And, and something I can add to this as well, and carried I'm not sure exactly how you would go about fixing mm. a slice, but for a lot of the time for us, if someone is slicing a golf ball, we want them to hit, if they're a right-handed golfer and they're used to spending their time over there, I want them, Andy wants them, to hit the ball as far left as possible right. just so they understand what a squarer or a more closed face looks like. So if you can, you know, part of this is actually having those practice swings, videoing yourself in slow motion and getting that feedback. You know, can you square the face up or are you leaving it open? So this is actually really quite cool here, this little sort of station you've got here with this alignment stick here. Can you swing back and square the face up and do it instinctively? So all I'm doing now is I'm matching this leading edge of my golf club up to the alignment stick. Can you do that in that? And then can you do that in a motion? So you're a lot more aware of what the club face is doing. And as Andy said then, the patterns of the, of the, of the body will flow around that, if that makes sense. So, so one of the things that we'll highlight as well here is that just Pierce, Pierce just goes down to impact. And this is familiar and people really don't like looking at this at their own golf swing is what we see from a lot of slicers is we'll start to see a little bit of this through the golf ball, mm. but the face is looking down the target. We'll see the chicken wing. There's no real rotation. And then we all look sort of bunched up with the arms and separated here. If we can improve what it looks like past impact, it's going to change what happens before impact. And I would say that if players were to simply just in their lounge room with the golf club, swing that around their body and just be more aware of the weight of the club head moving through impact, they'll find that the face will square a lot easier because when you are having this separation of the arms through the ball like this, there is really hardly any sensation hanging onto it. Feel. Hanging, hanging onto the, the grip yeah. rather than feeling that the club head is doing yeah, the work yeah. and it's designed to move in such a way as we're talking Can you about. remember the uh, David Ledbetter swing setter where you had the detaching yeah. magnets? I thought that was really cool because it allowed you to do that and get that release on the way through. For sure. So yeah, no, I, look, I, I really like that. And again, so if you can just imagine now, it's almost like you're just trying to get some speed into the arms, the hands mm -hmm. and the club. So shall I actually hit one now with a, and, and we'll talk about this finish that I'm just gonna have. So again, in my mind, this feels like a bit of a Henrik right Stenson. Sort You're of gonna finish. protect me from being hit. <laughs> He's got no faith at all. He's got some padding. But watch this, watch this finish when I hit this one. So you can see when I'm finishing the shot now, the kind of the, the, the chest is facing to the target, but the butt of the club is almost going down towards the target. That tells me that my hands and arms were working better through the golf ball, faster through the ball. I actually think that is an incredibly powerful reference point for a lot of players because how often do you see recreational golfers who struggle, arms separated yeah, around, yeah. they go, look, I'm turning like Rory. Well, <laughs> Rory does that because the club head has passed at a certain point in time that allows him to eventually get to that. And if you look at Rory at this part in his golf swing, this is he's in exactly the same place. It's a little bit wider, a little bit higher up. Well, not that high up for him, but it's further away from his body than most golfers. But this just tells us that we are squaring the face up and releasing it. So we'll often talk about if we want to get someone to play a draw, yep. we'll, get, we'll, we'll go to that finish. This laser Correct. butt, so like a laser coming out of the butt, the club yep. to the target. I can see it. Whereas if it was, <laughs> you can see that laser, yeah? Whereas if you want to play a fade, it'd be more that sort of picture frame finish that we have exactly. there. So don't, yeah. don't try the fade if you're a slicer. Uh, <laughs> no, no, don't, don't, don't try that one. But 
it's just a great way of you understanding how we can square the face up. And guess what? The more you work at squaring the face up, even to the point where you might start closing it too much, that's when your hips go, oh, now I can work. They've got green light then to move because the face is managed better through the hitting area. I think it's really important as well that when you're practicing, let's say you want to go to the range and have a go at this, actually finish in that position and freeze there because what happens often when we're practicing is we we go well i think i did that i think that might have been okay whereas if we actually stop finish and go okay let me just have some feedback did i do it okay i have the butts to the target my elbows are pretty close together this is nicely sort of folded here whereas if you swing through and you go oh, oh okay i clearly didn't do that this is going to force you to make a change it's going to break out the patterns and you're going to see instantly how you can change the golf swing in a better way. So Pierce, hit one more shot and just hold in that feedback position here for the, for the viewers. Okay, and just, just, just quick, I'm just going to show you this as well. Imagine this, that when, when you see this and you see both arms bent, don't confuse that with them being bent at this area here because this is how it will go. It will move through the ball with great extension. Again, the hips have turned now, they've cleared, but you can see the arms are extended and then they just fold into the body on the finish. Spot on. All right, let's see it. Okay, so I'm, I've got that feeling, Henrik Stenson, trust him. fast trust arms. Him. You can go slower when you do this, <laughs> so, you know, in order to do it, but look at that, perfect. He's held that here now, elbows are close. You can see the face is closed, butts down to the target. I didn't see the ball, was it a draw? Oh, it's an absolute beautiful shot. Absolutely beautiful shot, he's going to say that It anyway. was actually good. <laughs> but the feedback there is critical and you will make faster Im improvements if you've got some feedback when you're practicing. Well, there you have it, lads. Three of the biggest myths in golf busted. I don't know how people are going to take this, but as you can see, perfectly um, well put together information which players can apply with some very applicable drills into their golf game. Mate, thank you so much, guys. Me and my golf, make sure to check them out on YouTube. The kings of content out there and everything to help with your golf game, not only on YouTube, but also on their app. Go check it out and download it. Thank you very much, fellas. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Ripper, mate. Bye.